1994 and a DSC degree in technology with distinction from Alto University in Finland in 2006. In 2014, 2016 and 2018, he was appointed visiting professor, industry professor and adjunct professor at the University of Surrey in the UK, the University of Technology Sydney in Australia and the University of New South Wales respectively. He is currently at Huawei Technologies, serving as Chief Technology and Cyber Security Office, CTSO, in Australia, and ICT expert within the Southern Pacific region. Prior to that, he was Head of 5G Technology, E2E Global, at Nokia, and Head of Central Research Institute and VP Strategic Research and Innovation in Europe at Huawei European Research Centre. Please welcome David to the stage. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for... Um presentation um, in a way that we understand first the vision um, about using the mobile communication system, then I'd like to explain how we may realize this vision with some conclusions, especially on our security. So we can start from uh, the vision the UIC. What is the future railway mobile communication system? It's UIC's response to two elements of strategic importance for the future of the railways. Firstly, the ability to transmit, receive, and use increasing volumes of data, which is at the very heart of sustainable transport. From improving service quality, hybridization between railways and public transport, the new potential offered by driverless trains, the internet of things, smart maintenance, the railways need a suitable system to circulate these ever-increasing communication flows. Secondly, the railways currently use the GSMR standard for operational communication, a key element of the European ERTMS standard. However, GSMR is a second-generation system which cannot transmit the volumes of information needed for the digital train. In addition, Manufacturers have announced that GSMR equipment is due to reach the end of its life around 2030. To prepare for the advent of the digital train and to deal with GSMR obsolescence, UIC and its members have begun designing the future railway mobile communication system, the FRMCS. FRMCS is designed, first and foremost, to be able to support all of the applications that may be implemented within the scope of rail digitalization. This is why we call it an enabler. FRMCS must remain flexible over time, so as to safeguard investment in the railways. For this reason, it will be included in global telecommunication standards once these are published. FRMCS can also be used with complementary networks, Wi-Fi, public 5G, or even satellite. It offers what is known as bearer flexibility, again optimizing investment. Of course, FRMCS is built on the IP protocol, ensuring optimal flexibility and upgradability in terms of applications. Ultimately, just like GSMR, FRMCS will enable interoperability in railway operations. FRMCS will be a key driver for rail digitalization. It will optimize infrastructure cost of ownership while improving levels of service quality for users, all within the context of complete interoperability. It is opening the way towards the mobility of the future by breaking down barriers between transport modes and usage. So, uh, practically what the uh, International Union of Railways has done is uh, much more of uh, uh, painting uh, this vision, which besides the video is really comprehensive, so it's a lot of information. I will try to go a little bit deeper understand the uh, fundamental aspects of the uh, FRMCS. So what I've done is that this year that I'll put um, an important um, set of requirements. So those are the requirements that uh, 
are a better agnostic. So they're strictly focusing on the service, service applications or railways. And they have categorized those services into three parts. So they specify requirements on uh, the performance of those applications. And uh, the target is to have op optimal railway operations. They also say a lot on uh, how to support the business applications, both in terms of communications and data services for optimal operation of business in general. And then they have also gone much deeper with the current uh, a critical application and explain uh, detailed requirements on uh, the essential application for the train movements uh, as well as for safety or anything concerned with uh, obligations. And uh, um, after this uh, document has been made publicly available and pushed to ETSI, that is a standardization organization in Europe, um, it happened that ETSI has liaison with the 3GPP. 3GPP, it is the industry standards uh, defining and specifying the mobile communication system. So they have received those requirements, and today we have already available a detailed technical report, and the technical report inside depicts clearly how the architecture looks like. And by observing this particular design, you can see that the FMCS is expected to be their agnostic, because if that is the end user, those are the equipment, we have the, the communication services and the data services with across any kind of access technology. So it's not just about, say, a mobile communication system, but we also have other type of access, including Wi-Fi, and from release 17 onwards, also non-terrestrial access, like the video show, which means satellite. And on top of it, what we are expecting is a core network that handles all type of services, regardless of the end user and device we are having in use. This technical report now has been translated into technical specification. I have mentioned here the five fundamental documents. You see here, it's already well described uh, requirement on the voice, critical voice, but also critical services, common requirements such as train signal and then video data. And in addition to this now, it's ongoing uh, the requirement specification which goes well beyond uh, the above. So the system that we have um, in front of us to realize this particular vision consists on uh, different type of domains. So we have horizontal domains which basically construct the networks and the vertical domains which support different type of application. I can see it, like here, what we have depicted are basically the three main domains, application for coordination, operation and management, and transport and management. So like what we are expecting now that as the GSMR is about retiring, so in, in the 10 years from now gradually, we will assist at the deployment and announcing of the communication system through the LTE, which is our uh, a 4G system, and then it will be slowly moving into the, the 5G uh, communication and data services. So as the network, say, expands, we are also expecting that the system has to be uh, resilient to any kind of uh, threat and mitigate all possible risks. This is a fundamental requirement of the UCI and the uh, risks and threats has to be mitigated not only for the communication services, but also from the corresponding data service. As a result, the system we show you now has been really thought to handle all kinds of possible threats. I've listed the most important here, and uh, some of those have been already mitigated because the decision of having uh, over the air updates has been basically uh, uh, removed, and uh, uh, what I want to say here is that this is really one of the fundamental requirements that uh, the LTE as well as the 5G system has taken seriously. And now I show you how the uh, cybersecurity uh, is uh, practically handled. But before I enter into this, I want to share with you some of the results obtained in Europe because uh, 
And our new cybersecurity now, we, we, we do have uh, many concerns with developed on getting networks to our public network. So what we are expecting in private network is much less than what I'm saying now. So the analysis we got from uh, INISA, that is a cybersecurity center in, uh, in Europe, um, within the 28 member states, uh, reports the root cause categories of the telephone security incidents uh, over seven years. So it was just released at the beginning of this year. And when we look into those, we have that the majority of the root uh, causes are due to other software failure. Basically, it's system failure. It's strictly linked to the quality of the product the uh, operator is buying. We do have uh, also large errors and uh, problems due to uh, humans, a, a natural phenomena, like we had, for instance, um, the Frenchish forest uh, last week, where we remained or at least my house for, for five days without light. And only uh, the minority of uh, the uh, root cause categories are uh, linked to uh, malicious actions. And those malicious actions, when you look into those, are uh, the two third are denial of service attacks, which means attacks from external interfaces, which is very easy to handle, like uh, what we do that's really uh, mitigated uh, this kind of problem, or damages caused by uh, humans that they are basically destroying the physical infrastructure, like in many places the copper has been stored. So overall, the conclusion we found in those reports and the later analysis uh, coming from Europe Commission, but especially also in the UK, is that also the country origin, so the flag origin of those particular equipment is not really of major concern. Now, said so this, let us have a look at uh, how the system uh, uh, will evolve and how this vision I presented uh, earlier, uh, uh, it's truly realized by the third generation strategy for the 3 gpt So looking at system development, the 5G comes into, um, let me say, three phases. So as in already completely specified, standardized, and the mobile services are available broadly, globally, and I'm talking about Europe massive deployment, and uh, people already enjoy nice mobile broadband services here. And like around us, uh, South Korea, they already integrated uh, more than 2 million uh, users. What we have, for example, shipped already outside China more than 400,000 nodes. You need about 5,000 nodes to cover all mm -hmm. Australia, just mm -hmm. to give you the number where we stand today. And uh, beyond this, the system will evolve to support all kinds of requirements coming from the UCI, especially looking at the ultra-reliable latency communication services that will be released 16, analyzed early next year. So the system will be available uh, end of next year, again in 2021. And then the further announcement will be in release 17, where the other requirements, especially looking at the Internet of Things, will be incorporated with the capability of the system to provide access to more than 300,000 connections per site or even one million connections per kilometer. So no problem to support all the UCI requirements. How the system will evolve, because there are many questions and uh, uh, interests rise during the conference and the stands on how yeah, the system from the GSMR, how we will move to IT and then what it means by the It's just simply extremely simple uh, evolution at least uh, in our organization, what we have designed is a baseband unit that supports all modes. So it's just a matter of adding more cards and the system will be on air with a different type of venue interface. So we will first upgrade the system to support completely the 4G communication through the LTE, long-term evolution, which is a particular uh, 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 venue interface that works and has been designed below three gigahertz, so the sub three gigahertz, then the system will be announced by adding a new radio station, which means uh, looking at what we just add in one car, and then replacing, adding uh, more antennas, because the antenna is going to be active, will be informing. Very simple, simple uh, solution. The call network won't change. The fundamental difference between these two ways of accessing the network is that the new radio has been found announced with respect to the LP so that it can support all spectrum not only the sub 3 gigahertz, but also the C-band, like in here, millimeter wave up to the uh, visible line. 
And then later, the core network will be also enhanced, will be also uh, uh, improved. And we are talking about the 5G core. And the 5G core, it is uh, a cloud-based architecture that uh, will support many more use cases, such as the slice of the network I'll show you in a moment. And uh, the possibility of shifting the function very close to the edge so that the latency in the communication services uh, will be uh, dramatically reduced. Time frame is that the whole system supporting enhanced mobile broadband communication is already available, specified and uh, commercially in uh, other places deployed. It remains to be uh, in enhanced as far as the ultra reliable communication services and the mass communication. So mm -hmm. from next year onwards. And there we are referring to the release uh, 16 and 17, as I mentioned earlier. So there are many questions also. Yeah, but what are the, the changes at the protocol level? Do we introduce vulnerability? Is that really so that uh, the access will blur in the core network or this concern? And the answer is absolutely not. Not. It's exactly the same system. As I said, we have the same best band unit. Core network initially remains the same in non standalone. And the protocol stack you can see here, the control plane is exactly the same because the end user, the mobile terminal, whatever the terminal I'm talking about here, even a camera, it will be still served through signaling using the old generation network, so the LTE or 4G. And then initially, you will simply add a pipe or data in dual connectivity to the terminal. The stack, so the protocols, when we look at the details, exactly the same. The only thing we have introduced here, some description protocol, because the quality of service handled now by this station is much more accurate than the one the LP does. So not major changes, only improvements are the one big part. That's the first configuration, non-standalone. In its standalone configuration, when we will also replace the core network, uh, we will have a fresh new system end to end. And the core network, let me see here, the terminal is still here, and that's the access network, the radio access network that remains here. What we do here, we enhance the core network, basically we enhance this part. It is a service-based or cloud-based oriented uh, system, so it is possible to compose, program different type of functions. Now, looking at the railway, for instance,